The St. Louis Zoo's Wild Care Institute has 12 centers around the world. One center is the Center for Conservation in Punta San Juan, Peru. Punta San Juan is home to the largest Peruvian breeding colony of the endangered humble penguin. It is located on a beautiful peninsula on the Pacific coast of Peru. I, I just really love Punta San Juan because it's just such an incredibly diverse place and it's so, it's so special. I mean, I've never been exposed to ecosystems like this before. Granted, it's relatively small, but there's an incredible concentration of animals here. We are on the desert coast. Uh, the land is barren, like a moonscape, yet when it reaches the coast, um, there's this incredible explosion of life, and that's because of these cold ocean currents coming up from Antarctica, and cold water generally supports a larger diversity of sea life. It's a special place that needs to have special protection. Um, we need to get the word out that it is the most productive place on Earth and that it has all these threats even though we're here. Basically, this is a collaborative effort as all the Wild Care Institute centers are. And we chose this location because we felt we could have the greatest impact because actually the largest population of humble penguins in Peru live in this one location. The penguins are uh, marine sentinels and they are related to their feed, uh, food supplies. And actually, we are also related to that food supply. I think penguins or humble penguins are a great tool to protect this entire uh, system because they are already interesting to watch, are interesting to look. There were a variety of companies that were taking uh, Peruvians and, and international visitors as well out to the Ballestas Islands that are just off the coast of the of Paracas, but there were, no, there were no restrictions. They basically did whatever they wanted to do. They got as close to the animals, and so now we're trying to sort of standardize that with the help of Acarema and also provide protocols again for those, those uh, tour operators, but educate them why you, well, you don't want to do this to scare the penguins or the sea lions, and you don't maybe want to at this time of year go visit certain sites because the animals are breeding. So, and some of those protocols could potentially be used for the entire reserve system. The tour guides start to, to bring people with the idea to see not only sea lions, but also penguins and sea one or one of birds. And I'm sure marine mammals as well. We plan then to make a study of uh, how, how close the boats get the reaction of the penguins and through that try to test some distances from which they could uh, safely observe the animals and uh, keep this as an as attractive uh, place. The Wild Care Institute actually helped to support some of the programs you had developed to uh, train teachers to develop curriculum for the schools. Yes, exactly. We were planning to get more coverage with the conservation of marine species, so we decided to work with teachers because they spend most of the time with students and uh, that uh, was very important for us. Historically, probably one of the greatest issues used to be guano harvesting, and this is a, a burrow nesting bird, so some penguins actually dig inside the substrate and nest in a burrow. In this case, the substrate is guano, and guano is basically uh, fecal material um, from the guane cormorant, a different kind of bird that historically has nested here for many, many, many years. Really what's under me right now, which looks like sand or dirt, is actually guano, um, but it's very uh, high in nitrogen, and it's a very very good fertilizer, and but it's a good substrate on the bedrock because most of the coastal area around here is bedrock. So the uh, humble penguins can't really burrow into that, but they can burrow into the guano. So we're in a guano reserve. Um, I just want to give you a little bit before we get out there um, on where we are, where we're at. This place was a very, this has been a very important nesting area, and um, in places like this, like Punta San Juan, other headlands were protected and, beca and became artificial islands by building walls around them to keep predators out, to keep birds in, and also just, just protect the nesting area. We're actually here this time to have our third sustainable guano harvest. The first one was 2001. So what we did was basically develop protocols that were penguin friendly so that the Peruvians could still harvest the guano for fertilizer, but not impact the humble penguins and the other animals that, that live here. Alonzo and the crew are going to be putting up the, um, 
the perimeter, uh, basically beyond which the guaneros can't harvest, because there's actively um, actively nesting penguins right now. So it's um, it's it's a it's a good time to harvest for one reason, because the guano birds are not nesting, but it's a bad time to harvest because a lot of the penguins are nesting. St. Louis Zoo has been helping us for years, uh, not only with the guano harvest, but also with a lot of um, research and year-round maintenance of what of um, the biologists and the permanent staff at this site. And that allows us to have a real-time understanding of how they're doing. Mike Atkinson, who used to be associated with the St. Louis Zoo, is now working at the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago. He instituted a health assessment of uh, initially the humble penguins here at Punta San Juan. And that was, of course, through the Wild Care Institute. Health assessment certainly, at the moment, is primarily baseline. And we're trying to find out what sorts of contaminants, what sorts of diseases, um, what sorts of ecto and endoparasites exist in the population right now. So what's the baseline? How does that change over years? So we're, we're married to this project. Once a year in January and February, um, the center conducts a census along the entire Peruvian coast. And Ann Tiber, zoological manager in the bird department, has been very active in um, that part of the project. In 2000 or 2001, it was about 2,000 birds along the coastline. Now, uh, last year's, this past January's count, is up to 20,000 birds. In 2004, St. Louis got together with Patty McGill, who is at the Dallas Zoo, and decided we would like to get involved in this. And then the three entities we work with down in Peru, the Apeco Group, the Acarema Group, and then the University Cayetano Heredia for the Center for Environmental Sustainability. All of these organizations have just been absolutely amazing at getting us the resources, they get us the boats, they, they set up everything, they, they help us get the permits that are needed. They actually do the bulk of the logistical legwork for us. We come up with an itinerary and we go down there, we take the equipment, but really they, they are the crux of it. They help us get done what needs to get done. There's so much going on down there and Humboldt Penguins is one little part of it, but it's our little part of it and we could never have gotten this far without the collaboration of all these other folks. Well, it changed me emotional so I can cry already, you know. <laughs> you take this with you in your heart all your life, and the only thing you can say to other people is uh, know what you're doing. Be careful with our surroundings and enjoy it, because we can live together. It's possible. We were so excited to hear that people from all around the world were involved in this because it really is a global issue that's happening with these penguins and these shorebirds and all these other animals and it really is important. It's an it's a important product to the marine life and to the agriculture. One of my objectives in, the, in my professional life is to teach uh, other people that the sea, the ocean, the marine life, it's very important for us. Collaboration and capacity building and forming partnerships, I mean, that's the only way you're gonna have success in any project, wherever you do it, even in the United States. I mean, nobody has all of the skills. I think that's what all these volunteers will do. Many of them are gonna come back here, I guarantee. Many of them are going to get their zoos more involved. Many of them are going to get their universities more involved. I think, you know, whenever you develop a conservation project, particularly when it's not in your own country, and, you know, let's face it, you know, I mean, we're, we're coming into Peru providing support um, for people here because we were asked to. I mean, we were invited to come here and help. So ultimately, the, the greatest um, success would be us walking away, us saying that these, these locations are safe and the animals be safe and have nothing change and it be, be the way it is now forever. The St. Louis Zoo's Wild Care Institute strives to create a sustainable future for wildlife and for people around the world.
For more information about how you can help, visit us at stlzoo.org.